Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Seema Modi. Stocks getting slammed again on this Tuesday. The bearish activity comes as Congress Senate lawmakers return to Capitol Hill to hammer out a second virus relief package. But the damage to the market may already be done. Let's turn to market researcher Jim Bianco, president of Bianco Research. And it's a pleasure to have you on today, Jim. On a day like this, we're trying to understand what's the catalyst behind uh, the pullback that we're seeing on Wall Street. What do you make of the timing, though, of the sell-off? Many people for months have been saying, where the market is trading does not make sense. Yeah, they've been saying that because it's been true from a valuation standpoint. There's no doubt that the market is pushing the upper ends of valuation. Some of them have even exceeded the 2000 peak. But a couple of things came together in early September. The first one was we saw a frenzy of speculative activity in the options market, highlighted by the stories about SoftBank buying purchases of um, the FANG stocks. And maybe a realization came in last week that stimulus that we were all hoping for, a stimulus that would help Main Street, would help boost economic activity, might not come at all. We've been very patient saying when the rule, when the deadline passed on August 1st, it will come over time. But now there's been a bit of a rethink that it might not come at all and that that will retard the economic recovery and push stocks even to an even more vulnerable position of being overvalued. So we're now on track for the biggest monthly gain since April. How would you characterize this uh, sell-off? Is, is it potentially a, a textbook correction, which I know you say uh, it potentially is? Yeah, I do think it will be a, a textbook correction, meaning that I wouldn't be surprised if it's 10 or 15 percent when it's all done after nearly a 75 or 80 percent rally since March. And what I mean by that is that you've had two corrections since the March 23rd low, April 1st, June 11th. Both of those had hard down days like we did last week. And on April 1st and June 11th, that was it. You didn't make a lower low. We made a lower low Friday. We're making a lower low today. So this market is showing weakness after the sell-off, something we haven't seen since March. And that's why I think that it's a little early to maybe jump into the market and that we could probably expect a bit more of a pullback and a bit more of um, you know heat around the collar before it's all over. You highlight some interesting technical trends in terms of hitting new lows uh, every day. If that's the case, when is the right time to start putting some money to work in this market if you perhaps missed out on the equity rally we did see after putting in the lows in March? You let the market tell you. Um, there's no magic level that if oh, it goes down 10 percent, I want to buy. If it goes down 15 percent, I want to buy. I've always been one that have said to people that when the market sells off, wait till you see signs that it's turned around and then jump in on it on the upside. Because even if you go back to March, um, if you were four or five days early, you would have lost another 15 percent of your money before the market rallied back. And then it rallied back only to your break even point. And so you'd be better off just letting this process unfold over time. And then when it seems like it's on the backside of it and it rallies again to jump back in. But we're not on the backside of that yet. I remember you actually turned bullish on the market in late spring. I remember that because you came on Trading Nation and had, you shared this unpopular view at that time. Uh, what's your view now? How are you managing your uh, your portfolio? Yeah, I did, and I and I said that because of the liquidity being provided by the federal uh, by the Federal Reserve and by the promises of stimulus and bailout provided by. The government, I wasn't necessarily saying the economy was going to get better, earnings were going to come back. I was pushing on those stocks. Well, now we're in September. The stimulus seems to be questionable. Who knows if we're going to get bailouts? But we still have the Federal Reserve. And what I mean by that is that if you told me, Jay Paul came out and gave a speech and said, we're not going to intervene in markets anymore all over, I tell you, this is an overvalued market that has a lot of excess frothy speculation and it's vulnerable for a serious decline. But you have the Federal Reserve, and they can throw another kitchen sink at this market. That's why I'm only looking for a correction, and then we'll see what kind of a response we get out of the Fed. So I'm in the correction camp. I'm not in the full-blown bear market camp, but and that's largely because of the Fed, not necessarily because I think the economy supports where the market is or that the outlook supports it. It's the liquidity that supports it, and that is important and should not be uh, diminished. So here's another question then. How much more liquidity do you want to see from the Fed? And in what type of uh, arena of the market would you want to see additional action if, in fact, we do not get a stimulus package? 
Well, that's a good question, because at one point, my longer term view is that the liquidity from the Fed will fail at some point down the line. They cannot, you know, single handedly support the market. I'm not sure it's this time right. around, but I suspect if the market goes down enough and it hasn't yet, they'll respond with what's been known as yield curve control. They'll, that's literally price fixing. They'll say that the five year yield should be at 25 basis points or the two year yield should be at 10 basis points. And they will then move to basically drive volatility to zero in the bond market and fix those prices and force everybody into riskier assets. Uh, that's what I think would be their next step if this market pushes down enough to warrant their action. Then we can ask whether or not it'll be enough or whether or not the market will reject it. I'm not so sure the market will reject it right now. So that's why I'm going to stay in the correction camp. But I am getting a little bit more worried. But I'll just stick with correction right now. No, but I'm glad, I'm glad you shared your sort of prognosis of what could happen next. The correction continues. Uh, certainly the spotlight will be put on the Fed. And then the question is what exactly they can do. So thanks for sharing your views there. Uh, Jim, always a pleasure to have you on today. Jim Bianco. Thank you. And thank you all for watching Trading Nation. I'm Seema Modi. We'll see you next time.